What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about seven upsides of moving to Norway. Um, there's some very obvious stuff that I've learned so far about why one might want to move to Norway. Uh, it certainly is beautiful. Every part of it seems to be beautiful. It's ridiculous. And the economy is amazing, the people there are amazing and kind, and uh, it just seems like an overall wonderful place to live. I think it's rated in the top five or number one on so many different types of charts and stuff that analyzes places, really great places to live. Norway is really beating a lot of the rest of the world in a lot of factors. So I was really interested to see if this video could provide some some detailed sort of insights into other reasons why someone might want to move to Norway. Because even though it is a amazing place, moving to a different country where uh, it, they might not speak your language, you're gonna have to, you won't be a citizen, you know, there's all sorts of different logistical problems. Uh, besides the fact that Norway is amazing, there's a lot of other problems you might encounter. So, uh, it's interesting to see what kind of perspective this video could give me, and if, if it could convince, if it could convince me that, uh, you might want to move to, to Norway, make the big leap, and actually move there. That would take a lot, so, I'm very interested to hear these reasons. So, let's take a look. Oh, I have to refresh. I want to take a look. Moving to Norway okay. is popular, and that's not surprising, since there are many upsides that make Norway a great choice, not only for visiting, but also for moving there. But what mm. are the upsides of this Scandinavian country? I would like to use the time to show what I believe are the 7 greatest upsides of moving to Norway. If you are interested in moving to any Nordic country, but you do not yet know which country is best for you, you can watch the video on this topic I made a few weeks ago, oh. link to the video description. Yeah, I mean, recently I've learned I see random stuff from time to time, metrics and data. All the Scandinavian countries, not just Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and others, they all are amazing and top the charts on great places to live. It's, what are you guys doing there? How are you doing that? How are you so amazing? I don't get it. Description and in the comments. There I compare all Scandinavian countries with each other. Which has this population pyramid its own? At Daily Geography, simply enter. You will increase your knowledge. Oh, I'm probably gonna skip his little ad. Advantage okay. is the high wage level in Norway. In a global comparison, Norway ranks in the top 10 worldwide by median income, according to a U. Okay, okay. So we're talking about if you move to Norway, it has a really high average earning and a high average wage. Yes, that's certainly a good reason to move somewhere, to to earn more money. But stuff in Norway is kind of proportionally expensive, right? Global comparison, Norway ranks in the top 10 worldwide by median income. According to a UN report of 2018, Norway, Luxembourg and Switzerland are the only countries in the world that have a gross domestic product per capita of over $70,000 and are not islands or microstates. It should be wow. mentioned that in Norway you pay with the Norwegian krone. One euro is equivalent to 10.6 Norwegian krones, one US dollar to 8.6 for Norwegian krones. Yeah, I think that's changed probably. What year was this made? This was made a year ago. All right. S changed a little bit in the recent days. The largest industries in Norway are the oil and gas industry, fishing, food processing, shipbuilding and heavy industry. About 50% right. of all exports are accounted to the oil and gas industry, another large part to the fishing industry. The largest export partners are the United Kingdom, Germany and the Netherlands. Yeah, it's really amazing, especially compared to Norway's population, which is only like 5 million people how wealthy the country is. That is one of the most impressive things about Norway. How it does so much, so great, with so little amount of people. 
and the largest import partners are Sweden, Germany and China. Compared to Germany, Switzerland or Austria, Norway's economy doesn't seem to be diverse, but still you will probably be able to earn a little more in Norway than in most of the other countries in Europe. For sure this means that the cost of living in Norway is quite a bit higher. For example, right. if you live off 2000 euros per month in Berlin, Germany, you need a whopping 2743 euros for the same lifestyle in the Norwegian capital named Oslo. Yeah, but that's the capital. But Berlin is a big city as well. Okay. Yeah, I assumed this. I assumed, okay, you're going to earn more in Norway. And you're going to have a higher standard of living. Uh, but things are going to be more expensive. So it's a trade-off. This means that life in Oslo is over 37% more expensive than in Berlin. If you plan to move to Norway, you should just keep that in mind. It certainly wow. is not a bad idea to accumulate some savings before moving to Norway. The yeah. freedom to roam, also known as the everyman's right, which not only exists in Norway, but also in other Scandinavian countries, Scotland and Switzerland. And freedom to roam. I've never heard of that. Freedom to roam. Is this some kind of uh, law or, or a right in Norway? You have the freedom to roam, to travel? I'm not sure what this means. Allows you to camp anywhere in the wild, create a campfire, and simply enjoy nature. The f oh. Oh. Interesting. So, you can go anywhere in Norway, in nature, and camp there, explore, build a fire. Interesting. Americans don't go camping a lot, because there's only so many places in America that are worthy of exploring and camping. But Norway has huh, countless beautiful locations that you would want to explore and camp. So I actually think this is a pretty important thing that, you, that you're able to do that legally uh, and without any limitations in Norway. That's actually really cool and actually helps a lot of people who are there, tourists who are there to camp and explore and enjoy the, the beauty of the nature and good for the Norwegian people who want to do that as well. Ah, that's interesting, I've never heard of this. Freedom to roam truly allows you to feel free in the Norwegian wilderness, so yeah. you will not be able to avoid discovering nature for yourself and experiencing unforgettable outdoor activities. Private yeah. land and protected national parks are of course excluded to the freedom to roam. In this is really cool because it also shows that the Norwegian government cares about the experience of its people and people visiting Norway. They went out of their way to make this a law, from what I understand, so that people can enjoy the wonder of Norway. They were really thinking about people when they made this, so that's really cool. In spite of Switzerland, where the monthly health insurance bills need to be paid, the health system in Norway is practically free. Of course, this is not a godsend, but the health costs are simply covered by higher taxes. Okay. I mean, don't even get me started about healthcare in America. I mean, the healthcare is good. You get treatments and you get cared for. It's just that you might lose all your life savings if you get into an accident and need surgery or need treatments for cancer. You might lose all your money and your savings because of the ridiculous way that our healthcare system and insurance is set up. It's ridiculous. So, basically, <laughs> any other system in the world I'm jealous of, especially one like Norway here, which uh, is based off taxes, and then you just pay your taxes, which is probably based on your income, and then everyone gets access to unlimited health care, which is absolutely the way it should be. Uh, in America, you pay your taxes, but then you have to pay a health insurance company, a monthly payment, so that if you get into some kind of situation where you need health care, that health care company will then pay for your treatment because you've been paying them. It's very convoluted and weird and makes for really uncomfortable situations because people are making money off your health and whether you need treatment. So that's not a good situation to be in. So I could go on and on about this. A lot of Americans are really fed up with it all. So yeah, Norway, this is absolutely a huge reason why someone, especially in the United States, would move to Norway for healthcare.
Nevertheless, Norwegians just need to pay an equivalent of about 17 euros or 21 dollars per doctor visit. According to the WHO, the Norwegian health system is ranked 11th worldwide. According to the OECD Index of the Happiness and Well-Being of the Population of Different Nations, Norway ranks first among other countries. Life expectancy is... Wait, what? Number one? Like number one in the world? I have no doubt Norway ranks very high in happiness. That's a great reason to move somewhere, right? I mean, fundamentally, just like fundamentally, like talking about the human experience, your life. You would probably want to move somewhere that makes you happy. That's what life is all about. So just looking at it from that fundamental level, that's a great reason to move to Norway. Uh, average, better average happiness. Population of different nations, Norway ranks first among other countries. Life expectancy is 81 years above the OECD average. In terms of life expectancy, Norway ranks fifth worldwide behind Switzerland ranking first, followed by Iceland, Italy and Japan. Wow. Fifth in the world in life expectancy as well. The people are happy, so the people are healthier, they live longer in Norway. That's great. According to a survey in which people rated their satisfaction with a value between 0 and 10, Norway got a total of 7.5 points. The countries that can keep up with Norway and also achieved 7.5 points are Denmark, Finland, Iceland and Switzerland. By the way, the yeah. average is at 6.5. The nature of Norway is another upside. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Don't get me started about this either. You could just go on forever about the nature in Norway. It is insane. It is outrageously beautiful. Every single shot I see of Norway blows my mind. The terrain, the, the, the fjords, the cities. Uh, that's not nature, but <laughs> they're, they're kind of incorporated into the nature a lot, the cities. So... The cities combined with the landscapes and nature are beautiful too. Uh, they, it's funny how in America, you know, cities are very industrial and cold, you know, whereas in Norway, they almost seem more lively and more bonded with nature. Um, but yes, just in general, the nature in Norway is like nothing I've ever seen. Norway has 47 national parks, 40 of them on the mainland and 7 on Spitsbergen. A total of 7% of the state's territory is protected. There are over 40,000 lakes and far more moors and swamplands in Norway. The number wow. of lakes is lower than in Finland and of course in Canada, but this number is still impressive. What I think is great about the nature in the Scandinavian countries is that there are large areas of untouched nature. Here in Switzerland uh. and probably also in Germany, you won't really find large areas of untouched nature anywhere. Every huh, untouched nature. Yeah, and because of the freedom to roam, you can explore it all and camp and not be interrupted or worry about any of that. Yeah, that's great. Every few kilometers, there is a small village, which is annoying when you plan to go on an outdoor wilderness tour. Of course, there is not a good or bad climate. It depends on the preferences of every person. Although yes, climates. Although Norway has some pretty severe winter, right? But I guess it depends on where you live. Though many people tend to enjoy a warmer, sunnier climate, there are some people who prefer a colder one. The warmest month in Oslo is July with an average maximum temperature of 22.3 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. 72 is the warmest? Yeah, Norway is much colder than the United States for sure. So <laughs> I think a lot of people in the United States would be a little uncomfortable in the Norwegian climate. I'm sure you would get used to it. 72 is like the perfect temperature. 72 degrees Fahrenheit, I should say. 22 degrees Celsius is like the perfect temperature. Uh, but Americans, in America, it gets up to like 90 or 100 degrees. Uh, much higher temperatures. So we're, we're used to that. The coldest month is January, in which the average minimum temperature is negative 5.3 degrees Celsius or 22.5 degrees Fahrenheit. In Oslo, mm. you may expect a bit over 4.6 hours of sunshine a day. Security is great in mm. Norway, especially on the countryside. According to the num Wait, how much sunlight a day? 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit. In Oslo, you may expect a bit over 4.6 hours of sunshine a day. Secu Four, four hours of sunlight a day? 
Really? That's like nothing. Is that true? I'm used to 12 hours of sunlight. 10, 12 hours of sunlight. Four hours? That's very small. Uh, is that because of where Norway is situated on the globe? Huh. Security is great in Norway, especially on the countryside. According to the Numbeo Safety Index, the first Norwegian city, called Trotheim, ranks 13th among the safest cities in the world. Norway, like Finland, is a safe country, where you certainly don't have to worry in case your children play in the garden or on the streets. No huh. Security is important when choosing a place to live. America has very, very friendly, secure places. And then there are places in America, cities in particular, that are not safe. And everyone is aware that they have high crime and they are not safe and you can't leave your stuff out or it'll get stolen. So it really depends on where you live in America, how safe you feel. So I feel in Norway, on average, probably across all of Norway, it's probably safer on average, I would say. Not only criminality, but also security in a global context is high in Norway. According mm. to the Global Peace Index, Norway ranks 20th in the world. It is okay. behind Sweden and Finland, as well as Switzerland and Austria, but it is still ranking good. Here are some interesting facts about Norway worth knowing. With over 80,000 kilometers, Norway has the second longest coastline of any country in the world. Only Canada uh. has a longer coastline. This is really amazing, especially when you consider that Canada is the world's second largest country, while Norway is only the 61st largest. Yeah, Norway. <laughs> Somehow Norway is just like all coast, which is pretty cool. It has such a long coastline, mainly because Norway has around 150,000 islands, making it the number one of the country in Europe with the most islands. 150,000? Islands? 150,000? Islands? Did I hear that right? Largest. It has such a long coastline, mainly because Norway has around 150,000 islands. What are these like when you look at this screen here? Does that rock in the back? Does that count as an island? <laughs> like, what is technically an island? Because 150,000. That is a lot. Making it the number one of the country in Europe with the most islands. The term ski is taken from the Norwegian vocabulary and means something like a piece of wood. Obviously, mm. there is no problem in performing all kinds of winter activities in Norway. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the oil industry is very important in Norway. Ironically, even though Norway is one of the top oil producing countries, gasoline prices in Norway are the eighth highest in the world. 37% oh. of Norwegians have a university degree. So Norway is, at least on paper, the best educated country in Europe. But Wow, 37% I think he said have college degrees, university education. Yeah, that's very good. It is not necessarily a good thing because this fact leads to a severe shortage of skilled workers and a glut of master degrees. Oh, like people who want to work art and crafts jobs, service positions. So many people have degrees, they want to work in like other technology fields and finance and stuff. So Norway almost has the opposite problem that a lot of countries have or want, where there's not a lot of people able to do blue collar service positions in Norway. Interesting. So you can see that Norway is a very attractive destination to move to, especially for people who are close to nature, but also for people who strive for new career opportunities. Do you have any idea which country I should address next? Then feel free to post a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to receiving your comment. Wow, that's the end of the video. This was by Moving Abroad. I liked that. I definitely give that a like. This was very interesting. You know, some of these topics were a little general, a little expected. Uh, some of the Norway is beautiful place to live, obviously. But some of these points were good. Some of them I did not expect, like about the safety of Norway um, and how you're going to earn more money on average if you move to Norway and have more opportunities. Uh, and that you know, the, the freedom to roam, to explore the country and all its beauty and legally you're allowed to do that. There's a few 
really specific things in this video that I was not aware of that are fantastic points for why you might want to move to Norway, uh, which is uh, exactly what I was hoping to see. Because as a whole, Norway is so like amazing compared to the rest of the world. There's a lot of reasons you might want to move there, but to actually uproot your entire life and move yourself or your family to a foreign country like Norway, which apparently a lot of people do, because Norway has a lot of people who immigrate there, I've heard, and a lot of diversity because of that. So a lot of people do end up moving to Norway because it is so great. So obviously it has no shortage of that. Uh, but nonetheless, this was extremely interesting learning about even more things why you might want to move to Norway. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway, Norwegian culture, things and stuff in Norway that I've never seen or heard before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.